the authorities acknowledged it, um, but they didn't. Uh, they played it down. Initially, uh, after the first attacks in October 2017, the term used to describe uh, the raiders was uh, the Portuguese word malfeitor, which translates as evil doer or criminal. Um, there was no acknowledgement of an international um, dimension to this fight. Mm. Um, only recently has it become clear, in the last six, nine months, it's become clear that this really is part of, uh, uh, of the global war waged by an international terrorist group calling itself Islamic State. Uh, they, were, they were defeated in their strongholds of Iraq and Syria, but have subsequently branched out into various parts of Africa, including Cabo Delgado mm. province in, north, in northern Mozambique. And uh, the fighting has become particularly intense uh, uh, this year with attacks on uh, towns such as Msimbala Playa, Kisanga, Makamiya, uh, which have displaced uh, many thousands of people and left uh, entire towns in ruins. All right, so what have the authorities been trying to do to put down this insurgency over the two years, three years now? Well, there's now, uh, they've clearly uh, mobilized more forces there. There's a, a cons this is a, a priority for the armed forces and the police. Uh, and uh, uh, they've also called in some international support there. Um, the, the Dyke Advisory Group, uh, private military contractors, which is a polite term for mercenaries, uh, have been involved uh, in giving air support. Uh, the Wagner Group from, uh, from Russia was also involved, but not so much now. Um, and, of course, the Mozambique has been raising this, mm -hmm. this matter in the SADC. Uh, it's clear that Mozambique wants uh, support from its other, uh, other his allies in the SADC. Um, and this, the, the, the situation in Cabo Delgado is a threat. Uh, and it's, uh, it's well known that some of the people leading this insurgency aren't Mozambique at all, the Tanzanians. Right. Uh, some of the people who have been arrested and tried last year were Tanzanians. So what does this group want? Have they a stated objective? Oh, yes. Yes, they stated their objectives. They want, a, they want the imposition of Sharia law. They want the outlawing of uh, alcohol, cigarettes, music. Um, they want to cut off the hands of thieves. Uh, they want uh, to hunt down and execute publicly witches, uh, all the kind of thing that you would expect from the darkest corners of Islamic uh, extremism. Tell us about uh, Cabo Delgado. Is there a, a big Muslim community there? Along the coast, there is a significant uh, Muslim community. But uh, it should be borne in mind that uh, this is the... Islam has been in coastal Muslim, northern coastal Muslim, for longer than Christianity has. And, uh, but it's been a, a fairly peaceful, tolerant brand of Islam until very recently. They have been in, uh, this is an imported brand of uh, fanatical Islam. It's not in tune with the uh, traditional uh, values of, Mo uh, of Mozambican Islam. And the orthodox uh, Islamic groups uh, have good relations with the government. And indeed warned, warned the government before the fighting began that there were extremists trying to uh, stir up problems in Cabo Delgado. All right, okay, uh, remarkable. Uh, we're going to carry on with this conversation, but uh, in the meantime, I'd just like to say welcome to our SABC3 viewers who've just tuned in. And uh, at the moment, we're having a conversation with the uh, Mozambique News Agency editor, Paul Forve, about uh, the insurgency that's taking place in the northern Mozambique. Uh, Paul, so they've threatened South Africa with... Uh, force inside our borders if we get involved. Is this something that uh, South Africa should take seriously? Um, well, I, this, is a, this is a statement that was made uh, in Ar Arabic on a uh, news agency of the of Islamic State. Uh, yeah, I think it would be wise for uh, South African authorities to, to be careful, to, to, to take such things uh, seriously. Though I doubt very much that uh, there are many supporters of Islamic State inside mm -hmm. South Africa. 
So how many people have uh, been killed and displaced by this insurgency? Well, the number of people, uh, no figures on casualties on either mm. side have been issued. Uh, it certainly runs into the many hundreds. Oh. Uh, and there are, by now, uh, tens of thousands of displaced people. Some of them have fled over the, over the provincial boundary into Nampula province. Others have gone to Kabul Gardu, to uh, provincial capital, Pemba. Uh, uh, so there's a serious problem of, uh, yeah. uh, dis uh, of displaced people, hungry people, people who, are need, who need uh, assistance, uh, running away, a uh, whole, whole swath of, of territory in, the, in, in this districts such as Makami and Musimba de Praia that have been depopulated. So what lessons can Mozambique learn perhaps from countries like Nigeria, Somalia, where they've had their own insurgency issues? And at one point, Nigeria thought that they had defeated Boko Haram, but then they came back and they grew and uh, became a problem. And uh, in uh, Somalia, similar uh, uh, challenges. Could this escalate to a point where they're as strong as uh, a grouping like Boko Haram, for example? I doubt it. I doubt it because uh, uh, their, their appeal is very much a minority appeal. Uh, I don't think they can expand beyond a few enclaves in, in Cabo Delgado. But even so, they do, do a lot of damage. And uh, this, uh, the area where it's fighting taking place is very close to the gas field. And uh, the Muslim government is uh, staking a lot. Uh, the country's future mm. on the liquefied natural natural gas projects uh, in the Rubla Basin, in the far north of Tanzania, far north of Mozambique, far north of Kabul Gardu province. All right, so there's calls for a regional response. Um, can the Mozambican army and authorities deal with it themselves, or might we need to see troops being deployed from the African Union, for example? Well, uh, uh, I think uh, I think in the first instance, uh, Rosmikas would like to uh, cut off support, external support, to these people. Uh, we don't yet know where they're getting their money from or their guns. And it needs needs to be investigated, and the sources of support need to be cut off. Uh, as for boots on the ground uh, from South Africa or anywhere else in Sadek, um perhaps, but not yet. All right. And what's been the general message to the Mozambican population from President uh, Nusi? Well, uh, President Nusi has uh, insisted that this is, uh, uh, correctly in my view, this is a terrorist movement uh, and it is important to uh, uh, give them no, uh, no quarter. Uh, and he's called on on the courts to uh, that was just that was just yesterday. Called on the courts to ensure that these people, when arrested, are are, are tried and sentenced uh, correctly and quickly. Uh, oh, and uh, he has warned the government has continually warned that people should not be recruited into the into the ranks of these. For instance, there are people who roam around the north of the country offering jobs offering jobs in Carpet or Gardo. And this is believed to be a front for recruiting people into the, ins into the insurgency. All right. uh, and uh, on several occasions, the police have intercepted uh, busloads of young people going to Carpet or Gardo to turn them back. All right, so just a little bit earlier on, you did mention that uh, in the area there's uh, uh, significant uh, gas projects there. I wonder if they are very vulnerable at this stage. Uh, has uh, this insurgency touched that area at all? Well, the, well, the gas wells themselves will be offshore. Um, uh, the, that, uh, the, the processing plants, the uh, liquefaction plants, some of them will be uh, onshore in the Afungi Peninsula in uh, the Palma district. And so there is a question of making sure that these installations are secure. This is a headache for the, for the uh, gas companies, yes.